Hello. Right, a very quick one today, because I want to talk about an ancient Greek poet that I've been reading over the past week, um, and that is... Hesiod! So yes, yeah, so I am sort of continuing my spiralling downward descent into sort of BCE literature, and um, yes, and I've just read Hesiod. Now I've I recently read or revisited Homer, Homer. and um, yes, Hesiod is kind of the the person who comes next. So I've I've read him. Um, I've read two translations, and yeah, I just want to sort of briefly talk about it, talk about it because it is interesting how. In the ancient world, um, Hesiod and Homer were kind of more or less kind of venerated or talked about in the same way, or kind of were in the same breath. Uh, whereas now, Homer is kind of greatly surpassed Hesiod in terms of his popularity and his um, and his fame. <laughs> so, like Homer, there are two works that are attributed to Hesiod that we have um, that we can sort of be. Sh sure that um, Hesiod wrote, and that is the Theogony and Works and Days. The difference between him and Homer is that these poems are much shorter, they are way way shorter. So uh, yes, they each kind of cover more or less of 30 pages of a book like this. And, um, and yes, and they are not kind of epic hero battle kind of stories, they are what they are. So unlike Homer, we do know a little bit about Hesiod, um, basically because Hesiod talks about himself in his poems um, and his family. Um, so if we are to believe works and days, then uh, his father was a merchant seaman and uh, he had a brother, Perses. Perses? So there are more poems which are attributed to Hesiod, um, sort of fragments, although most scholars think that these were written sort of way after and sort of attributed to him kind of... Um, falsely. So there's one in particular called The Shield of Hercules, um, which, yeah, scholars have sort of said, have debunked as being by Hesiod. It's also interesting that there was also, I think, a play or like a, um, a, a, com a either a comedy or a, it might have been a poem, I'm not sure, but there was a, a work of fiction written about Homer and Hesiod kind of in a, in a competition with each other, a poetry competition. And, um, Hesiod wins just because he promotes sort of peacetime stuff, whether whereas Homer is the better writer, but he promotes war sort of thing. So that's interesting. So yeah, so what did he write? Well, we have the Theogony and Works and Days. Now the Theogony is fascinating for people who, if you were like me, had a big old Greek mythology phase growing up, because basically it's 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 about the creation of the world and creation of the gods and goddesses. Um, and it's about the tit Titanicomachy, what is it called? The Titanicomachy, the, um, the Gospel Truth song from Hercules, basically. And then along came to see her, all this thunderbolt, peace and luck, those tuckers in a vault, they trapped and all this old stuff, chaos, it is trapped! It sounds a bit more exciting than it, than it sort of is. I mean, most of it is kind of like, it's like the genesis of Greek mythology, um, but that includes, it's more like a genealogy, so it's kind of like thingy beget thingy bob and thingy beget thingy bob and thingy beget thingy bob. But there are interesting bits in it, I mean there's the, there's Kronos who is, who starts eating his children because um, he's worried that they might usurp him, and so, uh, but Zeus is kind of hidden away and he eats a stone instead and all that sort of stuff. There is, um, yeah, the Titan, Zeus sort of fighting the Titans, there's a very, um, a vivid, horrible thing, a description of Tartarus, and then uh, the birth of Aphrodite, who came from the castrated genitals of some god, and then those genitals were thrown into the sea and the foam outsprung Aphrodite. It's Greek mythology for you. So yeah, so it's kind of, yeah, it's it, it's interesting, but it's not as interesting as you might sort of hope it is, just because, you know, you want kind of... And then along came to... He hurled his thunderbolt Like those suckers in a vault but um, it's not that, it's kind of like, this is a da 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 um, But it is interesting, it's only 30 pages long if you wanted to read it. And then the second work is Works and Days, and this is kind of the more interesting one, I've, I find, because this is kind of, uh, it's sort of a lot of things, it's a lot of things packed into 30 pages, but it's um, basically uh, Hesiod talking to his brother Perses and kind of 
telling him that you have to, you have to work. You've got to work. <laughs> you know, and it, you have to toil and struggle. And then, you know, the more work you do, the more rewards you get. And, you know, it's, it's, that's sort of the main thing of it. Um, and in it, he, he describes why, you know, it is our lot in life to work hard. You've got to work hard because, you know, the gods kind of made it so. Um, and he talks about Pandora and Pandora's jar and everything. Um, he talks about the five stages of man, you know, so there was gold, gold men and then silver men, bronze men, uh, demigod men, and then the Iron Age, which is where we are now, uh, or where the Greeks were then. And yes, and then there's some very odd advice about um, about urinating in certain places and stuff. But the tone of it is more humorous. It's sort of more comic. Um, so yeah, he sort of talks, the way he talks to his brother is very kind of, um, not sarcastic, but he's kind of quite, you know, come on, Percy's, don't be lazy. Also, I mean, he's very misogynistic as well as they were back then. So of course, um, as in Genesis, you know, all of the world's problems are sprung from women, women. So yeah, so like Pandora, the way he talks about you know, women, you know, you've got to marry someone who's not going to cause you too much trouble and all that sort of stuff. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it, but it is, inter it is an interesting, interesting read. Um, and reading the introductions to these as well is, is interesting to me because, um, so something I forgot to mention, yes, I'm in bed, and uh, something I forgot to mention was that, um, Dorothea Wender's introduction, she, she argues that actually the Theogony and Works and Days were not actually both written by Hesiod. She believes that the Theogony was written by Hesiod and that Works and Days was written by someone else, but then got attributed to Hesiod later on. Um, and she thinks this because um, the style is so different. Um, and it's also funny that she thinks that uh, the Theogony is a bit more dirgy than Works and Days, which I sort of agree with. But she's like... Um, Whoever wrote Works and Days is a better writer, but um, but yeah, it, it, he got uh, it got attributed to him uh, to Hesiod later on, which I thought was interesting. It's really interesting having read the Epic of Gilgamesh and looking at Mesopotamia stuff because a lot of things from Greek mythology can be traced from there as well. So it was obvious there was some kind of like trickling down. Much of Hesiod's material traces back ultimately to the older literature of the Middle East, particularly the Babylonian Enuma Elish. So yeah, so it's all, you know, all connected, all connected. Now, as I said, I've read two translations. Uh, one is from the 70s, this uh, Penguin Classics version. This is by Dorothea Wender. And then the other is from the 80s, and this is from M.L. West. Um, I read M.L. West's first. Um, this is primarily a prose, it's interesting this one, it's primarily a pro prose translation, but certain bits he has put into verse. But Dorothea Wender, she's chosen to do it all into free verse, into Iambic Pentameter, and as I said with Homer, I mean, I much prefer verse, you know, as for ancient poetry, and particularly her works and days is a lot more interesting to read. I, I sort of found it more sort of compelling to read. Yeah, so if I read her sort of invocation at, this, at the start, so she says, Pyorean muses, bringers of fame, come tell of your father's use and sing his hymn, through whom each man is famous or unknown, talked of or left obscure through his great will. And then ML West says, Muses from Pyrea who glorify by songs come to me, tell of your Zeus, your father, in your singing. Because of him, mortal men are unmentioned and mentioned, spoken and unspoken of, according to great Zeus's will. So yeah, it is interesting to me that Hesiod is not really talked about. I mean, it's kind of obvious why, just because he's not as exciting as Homer. Um, but it's sort of interesting that he was venerated as much as Homer back in the Dizay. But yeah, no, it's he's a very interesting person. I mean, the misogyny is rife, so, you know, you've got to sort of um, tighten your braces for that. <laughs> um, but I would definitely recommend Dorothea Wender's translation if you were interested in reading it. And he is a sort of the next step, so it's sort of, you know, it goes Homer, Hesiod, then there's a few more kind of lyric poets, and then we get into the dramatists, finally. So yes, that's Hesiod! So yeah, I just wanted to uh, briefly talk, talk about him, and then, uh, yes, give him a go if you are so inclined. Thank you. Goodbye!